Hello everyone. This may be a two-parter. I don't know yet. See how it goes out. What I like to talk about is, well, kind of proving that what you have is an artifact. You go out and find something that looks a little different. Something that you got confidence that it may be an artifact. You take it home, you look at it. You decide it is an artifact. You get a little excited. You go show a friend, a couple friends. You may get disappointed because not that it's not an artifact, but you're going to run into people out there that are used to arrowheads or certain things, but not this type of artifact. In fact, most people are not, and they're going to try to make you look stupid for finding it. But don't listen to them. I'd like to point out why I find these as artifacts and maybe help you along learning what to look for and what makes you think it is and kind of give you a little bit of argument for those that think it's not. You know, I have here, like my big grand head here, got a grinder, a little chopper, Mountain Lion, Thunderbird, Hound Dog, Grizzly Bear, Paint Pots, Shaft Straighteners, back there I've got a Serpent Head, a couple of Profiles, Old Blade, different things. Here's a little bead, carved out of stone, not really a bead, but it's, it is a bead for them. Maybe archaeology, you know, when you find this stuff, it's cool. Archaeology is to go out there and search for the old and hope you find the new. And what I mean by that is if you go out there searching and you find something nobody's ever found before, well, that's something new, and that's cool. But you might have difficulty proving it. People are funny that way. But don't deny something just because you don't recognize it. That's the problem. Don't make judgments on photos or videos either. Because they don't show everything. Unless you've got it in your hand, you can flip it over, turn it around, look at it real close. You can't tell. You don't know. Investigate it. Examine it closely. Look for signs. Chipping, pecking, grinding, polishing. Hold it in the shadow. Hold it, you know, a light shining on it. Look in the shadows. You can see, a lot of times you can see better the chip marks or carving marks. And then after you've proven it to yourself what it is, then you got the hard part. You got to guess what it was used for because nobody was around. Anybody that was around then is not around now, I'm just saying. Just because somebody says it's not real doesn't mean it's not real. Don't listen to these yahoos. Most Americans, or Americans, most people out there, when you speak the word Indian artifact, bing, arrowheads. That's all they think about. Well, let me show you a few things here. I have, first off, like right here, the Thunderbird. I stepped over it three or four times. I seen it. I did not believe what it was. Once I picked it up, and I seen it was carved on. First thought it was a symbol, and it took me a while to see it. See, it's a Thunderbird. You've got the beak, the eye, the back of the head crest here. It's just a bust of one. It's not wings and everything. But if you look right in here, you can see where they carved on it. You see the chip marks through here. Cut marks all back through here. It's a Thunderbird. Pretty cool, I think. Now, mind you, these stones have been weathered for hundreds of years, so they're not going to be every mark on it shining bright and reaching out for you. Most of these are sandstone I have here. I have some that are sandstone, some chert, whatever. But, the, like, the sandstones are pecked, ground, and polished. 
I'm going to polish off almost every bit of the tool marks. So they're not going to see it. They're not going to believe it. This one right here is a hound dog. Jed Clampett's hound dog, see? Nose, ears flowing back, eye, ch eye crest. You see where they chopped away on it? Underside, where they chipped all that off. It's limestone, and it is a hound dog. Any of these yahoos tell you that something's not, it just shows their ignorance. They don't, they think it's not what flint or something i mean like this piece here you see where they worked it on the edges all the way around some kind of scraper i guess i've got this piece here which is a real good giveaway as to it's been worked on you can see that all, all these lines right across here they chip that out if you hold it where it's kind of shadowed right there that's what i mean by looking in the shadows you can see where they chip down on it some kind of scraper or something I don't know why they chipped all that out I wasn't there but got a little knife here see they did quite well with it it's been pet ground and polished now got some other pieces over here This one's a really neat piece. It's a serpent. You've seen these in my other videos, I'm sure. But what I'm trying to show is how they're made. This one here is unique because it has porcelain. They had kilns back then, you know, fire ovens. They'd carve it all out and then cover it in porcelain. Put their little mouthpieces, the dots, you know, what have you. Painted the eye. Then they'd bake them. They'd keep it real pretty back then, I'm sure. Colorful, what have you. But then they'd die off and these pieces would still be around. They'd bounce around in the creek or whatever for hundreds, maybe thousands of years and get beat up. But if you can see, porcelain is still on it in pieces. But nice piece. And here I've got a wedge. Wedge is kind of cool. I mean, just splitting wood or what have you. Got a couple of shaft straighteners. Got this piece here, which is cool. It has a symbol on it. It actually has two, maybe more, but I can only see two of them. You can see it right there. Is that symbol carved in it? They put one on the other side, same distance, everything. It's just this side was down in the creek and erosion kind of got to it right there. And let me sw see. swing around here to my lion, which is my favorite piece. I've shown it to you all many times. This is the lion, it's a mountain lion. Get that dang thing to focus in here. Let's see if I can bring it in a little tighter here. There. Mount line. You can see through here where it's been chipped on. Cut the mouth out. Cut the ear. Ear out. Cut the line. You see the chips in it. Just like an arrowhead. It's, an, it's a bust of a mountain lion, kind of like a deer head mounted on the wall. Pretty cool. And if you swing by over here, I have a couple of profiles. This one right here is a profile of a human. You got your, what, your nose, mouth, eyes up here, headdress, goes back to the back. They have tied. You turn it this way a little bit, you can see a little bit of the cheek. Looks a little more like what it is supposed to be. 
It's a cool piece. Cool piece. About the size of a half dollar. If you look at a quarter at George Washington's head, and look at this. Same thing. Then we have this little one here. It's another profile. Indian with his ponytail. It's a different type of stone. It's more of a quartz. If you can see where all along the back here, they carved it off. Carved that line right there in it. Get up close and personal with these. Put them in your hand. You can tell what they are. Well, I think I've kept you long enough. I'm going to have more. More videos. This one's not going to be a two-parter. I'm going to leave it as is. But I'm going to have more trying to explain to you how to... How to find, recognize, and tell that truly is. Do not listen to anybody. Anybody say, looks at it and says, Oh, this ain't real. That's not true. Don't believe them. If you look at it, it's real, it's true, and they say it's not. It very might well be. Just like my ex-girlfriend telling me she didn't do whatever. When you know they did. You know it's real. It's real. Trust your judgment. Thank you very much. Y'all take care. Have a good evening.